All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at the factors that shift supply. And I want to take a close look at each one individually, and we're going to talk about the impact that they have, whether that will increase or decrease supply. Firstly, I want to look at input costs. This could be labor, the people that produce or work for us, that produce our goods and services, or the materials that we use to produce something. So let's take a look at something like chocolate, for example. If the price of cocoa, an input into the production of chocolate, if its price were to rise, producing chocolate becomes more expensive. Therefore, supply would decrease. Right? Because it's more expensive to buy the materials to make chocolate, those producers will make less. And the other side is also true. If it becomes cheaper to source cocoa or labor to produce chocolate, then more chocolate will be made. The second thing to take a look at is government policy. And this mostly revolves around taxes, subsidies, and regulation. The main thing you want to focus on for this point is the impact on business cost. If it drives up business cost, it's going to decrease supply. If it decreases business cost, it's going to increase supply. For example, reducing taxes on business allows them to retain more of their profit, so it makes it more profitable to produce. Subsidies are provided by the government to businesses and help lower the cost of production because the government takes on some of the burden. Third is regulation. If you put regulation in place, it's more expensive for businesses to abide by the rules uh, or the new regulation. Or if they repeal or pull back regulation, which means they reduce the amount of uh, red tape or the different uh, requirements that are in front of business are reduced. That might be something like reducing the pollution, uh, the pollution amount, rather uh, increasing the amount you can pollute and reducing the restriction on pollution or reducing the restriction on how many hours you can ask your staff to work. So there's all these different regulations that businesses face that the government could either put in place to drive up the cost of doing business or pull back which would reduce the cost of doing business. Next we're going to take a look at exchange rate fluctuations and this really impacts the cost of materials bought from overseas by companies domestically. So if we are operating out in the United States and we're sourcing products from or sourcing materials from around the world if the dollar becomes weaker, then those materials appear to be more expensive. So the focus here is on the change in exchange rate and the impact it has on those things we buy from abroad. The price of abroad might stay the same, but because the dollar has either gotten stronger or weaker, it can impact our cost. If the dollar is weaker, it would become more expensive if we're an American company operating in the U.S. and buying from abroad. And in that same scenario, if the dollar gets stronger, then suddenly our materials become cheaper. Also to consider in production, assume a firm can make two goods, and we'll use the iPhone and the iPad uh, because it's the simplest example I could come up with. Now imagine that Apple can use the same resources to make the iPad and the iPhone. If they find that they can make greater profit on the iPad, then they might switch the resources in production to producing more iPads, which would then limit the amount of resources being dedicated to producing iPhones, thereby reducing the supply of iPhones. Now, is that likely to happen with Apple? I don't know, but I would say if we look at this from a much simpler perspective and just examine a company that produces smartphones or tablets, if they realize they can make more profit producing tablets, then it's likely that they'll be or they'll reduce the amount of smartphones that they're producing, thereby reducing the supply of smartphones. Improvements in technology allow firms to do more quicker and more productively. So anything that advances their production process and lowers, lowers their per unit costs or any other major improvement in technology that allows them to become more efficient should increase supply. And this is similar to an increase in productivity. I mean, if you think about all the different stuff business people can do today, 
versus what they could do 30 years ago, you can probably understand why they can be more productive in the same amount of time. And really what this focuses on is similar to what uh, the improvements in technology focus on is lowering costs per unit. I think which actually all of these are focusing on. If you decrease cost per unit of production, uh, then what you're looking at is an increase in supply. And again, if your per unit costs rise, then what you're looking at is a decrease in supply. All right, in the next video, we're gonna jump back over to demand and take a look at uh, some different things we haven't examined yet. But for now, what you should be familiar with are the individual and market supply curves, bringing it together to understand what would cause the supply curve to shift left in a decrease or right in an increase. And how that looks, we're gonna take a look at in the next video. So if these videos are helpful for you, leave me a comment below. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Enhanced Tuition. Send me a message at EnhancedTuition at gmail.com. Please subscribe. Again, that's how you support me. You let me know I'm doing the right thing. I'm going the right way. Uh, of course, this channel is in its early days, so it's a little bit quiet. But I imagine that as things pick up, more CIE economics students will be visiting. And uh, hopefully we get some good discussions going on in the comments. Again, please contact me. Let me know what I can do for you. And I'll see you in the next one.